Welcome to Match Me Abroad, Season 1, Episode 6, Bring Me a Ring. Um, I'm really enjoying the show. What do you think? Which one's this? This is the one we just watched with I Harold. Like Harold. Yeah, I mean, I. it seems like a lot of people have commented that they only want to see bad dates. I actually don't. I don't want to see all bad Had dates. Had enough of those in real life. I actually do want to see people have good dates, and they they had them. Where do you want to start? Yeah, okay. Okay, I'm going to start. I'll just go in the order in which they were presented in the preview. So we start off with Susan. Susan doesn't have a date this time. She's meeting with Juan. To chew him out. Well, he's there to chew her out. Yeah. I mean, she has concerns with the guy. And, I mean, he... Okay, last time we moved... We looked at probably what 18, 20 houses. I mean, a lot more than that online before we actually I mean, we looked got at to where we were looking. Hundreds of houses, but when Thousands. we got here, but when we got here, like across like uh, seven, several eight states. different states. Yeah, I mean, we looked a little, mostly Montana, Colorado, Arizona, maybe a little New Mexico, uh, mostly Colorado though. Texas, Louisiana. Yeah, I mean, very briefly, but we really sort of kept mostly. We ended up, in, even when we were in Colorado, we looked at probably four or five different, major different areas. We looked uh, kind of Grand Junction area, outside of Grand Junction. We looked at Durango area. We looked at Cortez, all around Durango, which there's four or five major, major towns all around Durango that we all looked at. We looked at Pueblo. We looked at Colorado Springs area and kind of anywhere in between um, was once we narrowed it down to Colorado. So... But when we came down, we came down for a long weekend, a three-day weekend. We, yeah, a whole big three-day weekend. Um, and we saw... Gosh, I'm trying to remember how it went because we didn't go on Sunday. We did a little bit Monday. We saw most on Saturday. Yeah, we saw like 13 we, I think we Saturday saw, or I think something. we saw a bunch on Friday, too. Okay. Because we saw this a house. Bunch on Friday, then. We saw a bunch on Friday, and then we saw this house on Saturday because he was like, "I, you know, what you're describing sounds like a client I have who does hasn't listed her house yet." Um, but and it didn't get listed. Didn't get listed. But he said, "But she signed a contract with me." But it sounds exactly like because we're like we want trees around the house, but we also want open space. We don't want to be in some ho hoity-toity podunk town like Pagosa. <laughs> um, anyway, and so, but the, my, my, okay. And we I got wanted a, a Home Depot and convenience with like, you know, a big Walmart. Well, we kind of wanted to be near kind of a cool town. And then also we wanted something that was reasonable, that had enough resources for our son. But my point is we had narrowed it down to about 18 houses at that point. And we saw like nine one day, 12 the next or whatever. And then the following I Monday. I like 12 the first day. And then 13. the day we left Monday. We went back and visited this place and the other place mm. that we were looking at, if I remember correctly. But my point being that when we moved, we looked at 18 houses. Juan is mad because she has not found her man after two days. Um, and that's a little silly to me. Um, and he's really down on her. He's like, do you know what your date said? And I kind of feel like he's 16 years younger you know, like a lot of people are really down on how picky she is, and I do think that her having handsome and rich as her first two in hair, as her first two qualities, is a little ridiculous. But um, you know, the first guy didn't really seem to be very interested. Their their interactions were off balance. He's more of a talker, and she's more of a talker, and she resented that he wasn't asking her more questions. As opposed to us, where I'm the talker, and you hardly say anything. Hardly say a word. Um, but I don't consider that to be a bad thing. I didn't think the dude was bad. It just didn't seem like they were very in tune. I mean, it was a little rude when he talked over her. Yes. He thought and, a lot of himself. And then the second date, he seemed like a very nice guy. But even then, he's like, I like to go and meet girls and vacation and stuff. He didn't seem like someone who's going to settle down. To me, seemed like a great catch. Could be a lot of fun. They hit it off. Um, it was a little... It is a little weird that she doesn't want to talk about her past, but I get it. it's like a first date that's on TV. Maybe some of that is like second or third date kind of thing. But Juan's like really mad at her. Juan's kind of mad at her as if she got up five minutes into the date and was like, you're a loser and a jerk and left. And I'm like, so she hasn't found the guy she wants to date after two dates. We, we had to look at 18 houses. If I was looking for a matchmaker, Juan wouldn't make the cut. No. Nina seems really good. 
And I'm going to reevaluate. That? That's the one in Morocco who set Seneca up. We'll see. We'll see. The jury's still out. Um, and Katarina was in my no pile. When we get to Harold, she's sort of she's like back in the oh yeah. If she's if this is the work she normally does, I don't know why she bothered with that first one. Maybe TLC was like, you know, like Throwing told a train them wreck. like don't don't don't. Like, make them look bad. Or maybe they just give them a bad first date so the second one will be tolerable even if it's not great. I don't know. Maybe that's a... Maybe that's a... a method? A method. Uh, speaking of which, should we just go right into Harold? Well, we could talk about him. I'd rather not go inside him. <laughs> you ready to dive on in? No, face first I, really, into I wanted him to have something that works out and it's looking... Good. I have butterflies. I will say, so we meet uh, Michaela, who describes herself as geeky nerdy. They go on a tour of the water treatment system, a historic water treatment system. Which is now defunct. Which I am not going to make a bit of fun of. Well, it's funny because it's not what you think of as a first date, but they're both like, oh, Maybe I love learning stuff. Maybe a joke about that. Maybe you can find love in the sewers. Yeah. But I, we cannot make this joke because when we travel, I drag him to every educational place, which has gone well. We've enjoyed a number of places. Horrible the time that I was like, oh, look, there's a museum about Native Americans. And we went to it and it was a museum about orphanages. Oh, Native American, like, um, residential schools. Good to know your history. Terrible for a fun date. Yeah, not not a great fun. Admittedly, we were married and we were on a road trip at that point, but that was definitely like anything. Oh, played. oh, <laughs> I was like, oh, this is accurate history that we should be aware of, but absolutely heartbreaking. Oh, now I remember that. Wasn't that was that in Missouri or Kansas? It was somewhere along there. I mean, it could be anywhere in the United States. Would that be an accurate oh, museum? Oh, Lord. But it was, it was about, like, kids who were taken from their family and then put into orphanages and then... Buried under them. I mean, it was awful. It was awful. And so I was like, well, we're going to be a little bit... We're going to pick it differently. But that same trip, I think it was the same trip, because after that you were like, we've got to pick a little better because this is really... Anyway, but then we went to, I think it's Hutchinson or Hutch, Hutchinson or something, Kansas, middle of nowhere. Like, it was one of those things where you're on a, a two-lane, like, it's paved, but there's nothing for miles. And then you get there, and there's actually not a lot there, because it's a salt mine underneath the earth. So we went on a tour of the salt mine underneath the earth, which is was really super cool. They had a bunch of movie memorabilia. It was nice and cool down there. Nice and cool. Um, in the middle of summer. In the middle of summer, because the, the the humidity there, is, the temperature is so stable, they do they store a lot of stuff there, and so they had a bunch of movie Sh like probably shouldn't say too much for our overseas viewers. Oh, well, yeah, I mean, well, it's it's not it wasn't that kind of stuff. It was like yeah, it was movie stuff. It was like movie stuff, and so we saw like one of the Batman original Batman costumes. It was a very eclectic sort of experience, but it was funny because we got on this little tram and they take you back into the salt mines. They turn off the lights and it's like pitch, pitch black. Like, yeah. Yeah. And then we, you go, you come down in an elevator with all these other people and everything. But at the end of the tour, there's a big, it's a salt mine. So above you is salt. Everything is salt, like hard salt. So it's solid and stuff. And there's this pile of like loose salt. And, and they're like, you can take some pieces. And John's like, quick, fill your purse. Grab as much as you can. I don't think it was that. <laughs> but you're pretty excited. And so we do have several large pieces of salt. Um, halite is what you call it when it's in the mineral form. It's the same thing, but uh, down in our, our display case. And then right next door to it was a space aeronautics. Close to it, yeah. It was like kind of kitty corner, but it was kind of funny. There was nothing else out there that... Uh, the space plane, that, the, that was in the city, babe. No, it was right next door was the Rocket Cosmonaut Museum. I will look it up, John. Okay, and you'll be because, wrong. It was in a city. No... It was in Hutchinson because, no, I know this because, you're going to make me look it up, because um, we were just finished the salt tour and so we only had like an hour and a half in there and we got to see like one of those F-16s or something no, that was... it was the stealth bomber. Stealth bomber that was leaking because... No, so the, the joke they did to all the new engineers was that they would come and say to the old engineers, oh, it's leaking fuel while it's sitting there. 
They're like, uh oh, you better get on that. And it was a known thing, like it leaks fuel until it hits temperature and then it doesn't leak anymore because the metals expand. And if it doesn't work like that, then bad things happen. I don't I don't know what, but that it was designed like that to leak fuel until it got hot. <clears throat> uh, well, it looks like we went to Stratica. And there was a lot of talk about those dirty Russians and how we beat them no. in the space program. So it was really interesting. It was really interesting. I didn't know the history of the U.S. of the of the space race, which was involved that in World War II, when Russia came in on uh, Germany on one side and America came in on the other, as they captured, they each got a section of German rocket science or scientists or in scientists. Cases. And we, so, like, we'd give them the buildings to Russia, and we'd take the scientists. Yeah, stuff like that. And so we we did the whole thing in like an hour and a half. But I learned a ton about. I didn't know, though. I didn't know any of that. And now I know slightly, slightly more. But that's like our idea of a fun date is to go to a museum. And uh, so I cannot. But it, I super like Michaela. She's taller than him. She's blonde. He's instantly smitten. He's like, she's beautiful. And this is why I got annoyed online. When people were like, oh, he just wants a supermodel. No, I think he just wants someone he's attracted to. Like, I think that's a reasonable thing is that everybody wants someone they're attracted to. And you, it's only later on when, you, when people start saying things like, Heidi Klum, yeah, she's not good enough for me, that you start going, okay, you're an idiot. Or, you know. Well, she I'm, was too good for Project Runway, apparently. No, they fired her. What? How can you fire an executive producer? They, they, uh... Oh, I don't know how that worked, but she left, and Tim Gunn left to do their own thing on Netflix. Well, whose ever idea was that? that and they was, replaced it. Was it was a bad one. They replaced her with a younger uh, uh, Jared Kushner's sister-in-law. Her sister's married to Jared. No, that's not right. No, she's sorry. Yeah, it is his sister-in-law. You she's, say names. I hear names. Okay, Trump's daughter is married to Jared Kushner. His brother is married to this model. I don't know who she is, but that's who she took, no took over. No wonder it was terrible. That's who took over on Project Runway, and then Christian Siriana, who I do like, is now the mentor. He got a lot better since the season he was in. He was like, well, he was a little... He was a pretentious little twit. something. And, um, and then and he, he has become not that. No, he's, he's a cool dude, but I still... It's no Tim Gunn. Have to make clothes for fat people? Yeah, that's how, he, that's how he was on the show. And then in real life, he was like, I want to make clothes for fat people because no one else is dressing them and I can have every single one of them. And his work is good. So he's an example of someone who has growth. He, yes. Um, where were we with him? Oh, so they're in, they're in Prague. They're in a sewer. They're in a sewer. He puts his arm around her. I will say they're walking down some, some pipe and he's like looking at her and smiling. And he looks genuinely handsome. Like, that is what... I mean, and, and she... They're totally on the same wavelength. She the, is impressed the, by him at Comic-Con, meeting William Shatner. Shatner. They're on this... They have the similar interests. They seem to kind of think on the similar wavelength in that, like, when he... Um, they're sitting down having... Uh, well, somewhere along the line, he it, right when he meets her, he gives her... This drawing, and she's like, "Wow, check men never give me gifts." And it's like, "Yes, that's perfect. That's the perfect matching of that energy." And then he, they go to this water treatment thing, which is why I'm kind of like, "Did Katarina, the um, matchmaker, like purposely just completely bungle the first date?" Because um, I don't think I don't think Michaela would have minded if he had shown up in suspenders or in his old clothes. I don't think she would have cared. She was like, he's handsome. You know, I don't think he's sexy by most people's standard, but I think smart men are sexy, and so I think he's handsome and attractive and sexy. And they talk about things like this big piece of machinery couldn't be made in America, and she's, she's interested, and then she makes a joke about... Like, he goes off to the bathroom, and she draws a little sun and a, and a, and a cloud on one of his sketches. And I was like, this is the perfect match of energy. Like, this is exactly what I said with every every pot has a lid or whatever is like this whole like well you've got to change everything about you Harold it's more like well why don't we find Harold someone else who likes sci-fi and then he you know he's um he asks what her hobbies are and she's like I play 
computer games, and then she says that Assassin's Creed, and he says, Assassin's Creed's great. I do have to say, we're not computer game experts, but I would say that Assassin's Creed is kind of a good, like, is a good it's, I, gamer answer. I mean, I'm a gamer, and I it's too hard for me. It's too hard for me. It's just me, like, up against a wall, I'm, the character just going like this. I'm a Diablo player. Pu push buttons, smash things. I like arcade games, like all the old <laughs> arcade games that are just, like, the same game over and over again, just harder and harder. Tetris. That's what she said? Um... <laughs> um, I really liked World of Warcraft. In fact, I would I would play it today, except the only way that I can play it is like eight hours a day. I mean, constant. if you were paid to play. Yeah, if we can figure out a way, if I could somehow magically become a Twitch streamer. You could just add that to your three jobs that you already have. I Just why not? I, right now, I'm wasting all that time sleeping. But um, that's the kind of stuff I like. But I just say Assassin's Creed is kind of like one of those answers that says, yes, I'm a real gamer, and like that's kind of cool. So I'm impressed. It's a hard game. Um, but she, uh, they seem to really hit it off. And I find it enthralling. I love every second of it. Yep. I enjoy no, it. This is like made the whole stupid show worth watching. Um, I was really hoping Harold wouldn't strike out. And it doesn't look like he is. They talk about a 1903 steam engine. And then she's like, do you think it would have been loud? And he's like, yeah, I think it would have been. I think it would have gone chugga chugga. And then they both start going chugga 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 chugga. I'm like this i love this i love it. i find this enthralling endearing enjoyable like it's it's such a good counterpoint i don't know why more people aren't watching this show um on the boat ride he puts his arm around her you said that i did say that but i'm talking about the escalating stuff uh, they sit down, he, she says, you know, which is the each, you have to have something a little sweet. He pulls out a candy and gives it to her and she's like, oh, like she's delighted. And then we end the episode with him saying, well, do you want food back at my, my hotel? So we're going to see where this goes. I mean, hubba hubba. They might do the bone dance. I mean, he might bring this, he might close this show down. Um, in sort of related news. Oh. Stanika does a debrief with Nina, her matchmaker. And she's like, I want the first guy. Yeah, I'm done. And she's like, and Nina's like, no. So they do a little debrief. I don't feel, um, Salah, like, I don't, I don't think he's a bad dude. They just clearly did not. He didn't seem that into her to begin with. And she already likes Nordine. They're the first date. She's already kind of said him. She said she was, like, texting him for the date. So I'm just going to say that there was no chemistry between them and just leave it at that. It wasn't the vibe, is what I wrote down. It wasn't the vibe. She tells Nina, she's like, nah, I didn't like this. I don't, you didn't do a good job. And Nina's like, hey, that's totally on me. Juan could take some lessons from that. But Nina's like, no, that's on me. That's fine. I really think you should go on another date. And Stanika's like, nah. I, I'm, I'm still talking to Nordine. I just really want to go back and, like, get to know him better and see if this is going to, like, where this is going. You know, I get Nina's point of, like, you've only been on two dates. Maybe you should go on a few more so you at least know you I want to I forget that she says she hasn't ever dated before. So maybe she does need a few more, and maybe that is a good idea. But I don't know. Find something you like and stick with it. But the other part of me goes... But the other part of me goes... <laughs> Yeah, but she met someone who fit a lot of her criteria. They hit it off. Like, maybe you don't muddy the water. Like, maybe, like, so what's the, the big takeaway? Maybe she meets another guy that she likes a lot, and now it's more confusing, and she's distracted. Like, so I'm kind of, I get both of their points, but Sneak is just like, now. Nah. This is, like, this is it. This is not, this is for me. There's not a lot more to say. I think it was the only scene they had. I want to see her with Nordine again. I want to see another date. I want to see if the second they date goes as well. can't possibly have two happy endings. I know. That'd be... For a TLC John show, John, <laughs> we're lucky if they if they don't all end up in, in, in jail or divorced or something. <laughs> crying on the side of the road, running off. If, it's a, if it was a 90-day show, at least one of them would be running off into the darkness. After they got... After they got... A no fake fight. chest or something. A fake chest. Like... Wasn't it the Colombian girl? Is that another TV show? I don't know. Keep going. A fake chest. With the little guy that was bald. That's what I'm thinking of. Yeah, and he ran off. But I don't remember the fake chest. Didn't he pay for her plastic surgery? That's like, <laughs> fake boobs? Yeah. You don't call them a fake chest. I'm thinking like a chest. I'm trying not to be rude. Or like a, a chest plate or something. 
You don't know what a chest plate is. They're like silicone boobs that you wear around your neck. Tig old biddies. Uh, anyway, yes. So like that. So like the fake chest and thing. That's kind of what we're 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 seeing here. Um, <clears throat> yes, but we. So we'll see. I, I'm I'm a little bit like like I hope everything goes well. I've already looked at the preview, like the the description, so I know that she does at least meet up with him, and I hope it goes as well as the original dates do. And then we end off the show with a new guy. Oh, Tennessee. Chad. He's a Chad. Th 38. He's been engaged three, three times. times. And... He likes to cut grass. He likes to cut grass, which, you know, I didn't think... People, I saw... We watched it in the morning the next day because we are not night owls. And so I saw the tweets and stuff that were saying, like, we're making fun of him and cutting grass in comparisons to Hank Hill. And I was like, okay, so he likes cutting grass. But then he, like, mentioned it, like, ten times. And I was like, okay, I, now I get why people were making fun of him for this. As his main hobby. He's got a few acres. His mom lives right next door. It seems like he might have bought that for her also. And helps take care of her. So his dad died three years ago. He says that it sounds like they rushed. He, that he rushed into these engage, engagements. And it does sound like maybe he is a little bit of like, oh, you're good enough. Let's go ahead and settle down. Sort of guy. He's had two of those three fiancés cheat on him. He is a truck driver, but he's home every night. Oh, he's a truck driver. He works for I miss that. A, he works for a major shipping company as a semi truck driver, but he's home every night. It sounds like he was going out of his way not to say FedEx or UPS or something. Or like Walmart. That. Or Walmart or something like that. Yeah, but he said he's home every night. I said, you know, he talks like someone who chews. After who, the or, whole time they show him, he's got the chew circle in his back pocket. Okay. Or dips, as we call it. Dips. But they you don't really chew it. You just you put it right there. But then the very next scene, they cut, and he's got like a huge dip wad in his cheek. And John's like, really? Really? You think he might chew? You think he might be dipping? <laughs> what what gave it away? Was it the actual dip in his mouth? Was it the 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 can, the distinctive can? That's that... So if you... So you, I was... In junior high, and one of the girls, I had a sad story, her dad came and talked to us about the Civil War, because he was a Civil War reenactor. I thought you were saying he was in the Civil War, and I was like... He might have been. I don't know. But he had a mouthful of dip the whole time he was in class, giving a lecture all day, throughout the seven periods, or however many we had. And uh, we noticed he never spit. Oh, you're supposed to spit. I don't know if this is... That's nasty. Oh, you're going to make me ill. It should have made him ill. <coughs> Must have had a ah. cast iron stomach. <laughs> I, I mean, we, we have international viewers, so I don't know how relatable this is, but we've lived somewhere rural, and people who dip or chew or what do you call it have these... I don't know if they all do, but they have these canisters, and they put them in their back pocket, and then... Usually that you it like uh, erodes away. So even when they don't have dip in their pocket, they still, still have a circle. The circle. Um, and then the yeah, other usually spit. I mean, I don't know why I'm explaining this, but I assume there are people on the channel who don't know what we're talking about. Anyway, he does all that. They talk to his mom. He's going to go to. He's going to be. He's stuck with Juan, which already I'm like, oh, red flags, red flags, red flags. So unlike the two women, where. Juan's accomplice, Juan, picks them up, drops them off, he meets with them, he talks with them to some degree, and then sets them on a date. Instead, they decide, oh, we'll have Maria pick him up from the airport for his first date. So he's like, because I was confused about this, because they show him, like, in the bathroom, like, washing off his face, doing this stuff, and I was like, well, he's just going to meet Juan. Why doesn't he just go back to the hotel? No, he's going to meet Maria, who's picking him up, and they're going on a date. I would he's, choose he, another brand of wife beater. He's, oh, it was, he had a, a tank top underneath that was cut really low and deep. And it looked silk. It, I mean, it looks like it was nice material. We don't normally, I've not seen a man with that particular cut of a tank top. Although when I used to spend a lot of summers in the country, they would cut the armholes like all the way almost to the bottom. So the whole side was open. I guess you got a breeze. Or it was just a look. I mean, I don't know. I don't, I don't know. I was, it was always like a stranger in a strange land when I spend the summer up there. But uh, 
<clears throat> she she describes him as he seems like a pretty typical American, like a cowboy, which is like so funny because like, we wouldn't consider that a typical Ameri American cowboy. It's like a it's like a subset of Americans, not sub in a bad way. Just like you wouldn't say that everyone is a cowboy. It's like saying if you're like a surfer guy, like yeah, that's also not a typical American. That's also it's a very if specific. you're on the coast. Well, if you're at the beach, it's a very typical American. Right. But it's a very, um, you know, but, it's I like mean, saying a Portland hipster. Um, uh, Portlandia sort of thing. They, she... Put he, a bird on it. Well, it was funny. He tried to say that she was Bonita. And she's like, no, Maria. And he's like, no, like, Bonita, like, pretty. And she's like, oh, yes. I don't know if his accent was so bad. It's pretty, it's... It's I, there. I don't speak Spanish, so I don't know. But she's like, no, no, Maria. And he's like, no, no, I mean, I meant, like, you look pretty. And then they get in the car, and then they don't talk immediately. She's like, I thought he'd be more outgoing. All I'm thinking is, the dude has jet lag, and he's never met you before. Like, maybe, like, I think, like, it, my opinion of Juan continues to slide. Between setting up Nathalie with someone who doesn't speak the same language as her, getting so mad at Susan that she didn't find her love after two dates... And then setting him up on a date at the airport, like, I'm not real impressed with his, uh, with his, uh, instincts, shall we say. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So, so there we go. So it's an awkward car ride. We don't know what happens. Well, we know what happens next. They go on a date. And it's going to go badly, I think, because we saw previews. But, uh... But that's about it. That's the episode. I'm liking Match Me Abroad. It's the one that I probably added all the shows that we're recapping that I'm looking forward to the most. Because I'm genuinely, I genuinely want to see... Harold and... Seneca. And, and maybe Susan and Chad and Mark or Matt, I can't remember. I called him by the wrong name two videos ago. It's because like, we don't care. If they get hooked up with someone, uh, Nathalie, if they get hooked... Oh, and then there's a new one next week. The gal who is um, a princess. Okay. Which was funny because all we saw in the preview, and I'll mention this again next week, is that Katarina says, are you ready to surrender yourself to a man? And I went... <sighs> and then the is gal... Is she going to a majority Muslim country? I mean, is she... That sounds it, very... Like a very weird thing to say. To an American woman. Well, then maybe the word doesn't translate well because when I think surrender, I'm like, are we at war? And am I losing? Am I losing this war? Like, I don't, I don't really, but then again, it might be the cho choice of like, are you open to, I don't know. Dominatrix? Because the other words I'm thinking of are that are similar, like submit, which is also not a crazy word I'm particularly crazy about, or like, I think of marriages and, and relationships as partnerships, where like, because we were just watching something, we, we just, you know, all those terrible guys on the internet that are like, women are trash and they should never speak in a relationship and the man should never do everything. But we were talking about that and I'm like, does that even theoretically appeal to you? Because do you want to do everything? Do you want to take over paying the bills? You pay some of the bills and I pay the rest of the bills. If you had to pay the electric bill, would you even know how to do it? No. Because yeah. someone decided not to get statements from them. Anymore, because it saves us money. S except for electronically. Uh, and, and... And I like paper. Do you even know the name of who does our, our trash? Waste management? There you go, you got it! <laughs> but I was like, because th there's the whole thing where they're like, oh, <clears throat> men should do everything, they should make all the decisions. And I'm like, do you want to start making all your own phone calls? You know, like, do you want to start making... Like, no, it doesn't sound like, it does, I don't know what the, what the great deal is out of, out of this. Like, no, we do things 50-50. Not every single thing 50-50. I do most of everything. No, but I mean, like, you know, I'm the one who has to remember what day trash day is, and you're the one who takes it out. Yeah. And trust me, remembering which day is trash day is actually a pretty hard thing. It's not the easiest. Because we have... The trash is one day, the recycling's another, but it only comes every other week, and you would not believe how hard it is to remember if it's, was it last week or next week, so I have to do all that. It's this week. But anyway, the, the word, the use of her word surrender does not seem, to me as an American, I don't know, other cultures might be like, yeah, that's totally something normal. I, I'm not judging you if that's your thing. I'm just saying, I don't know that Czech is a big country where you surrender to women. 
Men, men to women to men. Well, I mean, they're their own country and not Russia, so I mean. What does it do with anything? They don't surrender. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah. Anyway, we're loving it. We'll see you around. Bye.